The Young Alumni Achievement Award has been given annually since the year 2000. It honors someone who has distinguished himself or herself in a chosen profession during the first 15 years following graduation from Juniata College. The recipient of the 2018 Young Alumni Achievement Award is Dr. Carl Kim, class of 2005. Dr. Deb kirchhoff Glazier, Emeritus Professor of Biology, will present the award. It is really a pleasure and an honor to be called out of retirement to give this award to Dr. Carl Kim. When I was working as health professions director and as biology professor, I, I was asked to write a lot of letters of recommendation, and I took them very seriously because they really did make an impact on students getting into different professional schools. And so when I was asked to, um, and, and whenever I did a letter of recommendation, I made some personal uh, comments about the students. So I thought, you know, if I have to talk about Carl, I definitely remember him and some things about him, but I'm going to look up one of his old letters of recommendation to see if anything else jumps out. <laughs> It wasn't the thing about passing out during yoga. <clears throat> but anyway, so I looked up a letter of recommendation that I wrote for him when he was applying for a scholarship after he got accepted to podiatric medical school. And I can't help but actually read it because it was eerily prescient. And so I'm going to read a couple excerpts from a letter of recommendation that I wrote for you in October of 2005. Quote, Carl is an outstanding young man. As outlined below, his study habits and extracurricular activities attest to his high ideals, his admirable character, and his dedication. Carl is one of only two students in my 20 years at Juniata who came to college interested in pursuing podiatric medicine. He applied himself diligently in his studies and never wavered from his goal. He did very well in our challenging pre-medical curriculum impressing me as early as his first semester with his performance in my Biology I class. Despite its introductory title, Biology I is very demanding. I require students to critically think about and apply a great deal of information in chemistry, the cell, genetics, molecular biology, and physiology, a daunting task for most freshmen. Carl was equal to the task and proved himself to be an excellent student. He was exceptionally conscientious, dedicated, and hardworking. He could always be counted on to go the extra mile. Carl did far more than study at Juniata. He was a leader on campus and was involved in an array of activities that demonstrated his desire to make a difference and his interest in the health professions. In regard to the former, Carl came to college with experience as a high school class president and was subsequently elected as class president at Juniata. He was also on the academic judicial board and served as a resident assistant responsible positions that demanded maturity and integrity. As president of the Juniata Active Volunteer Association, Carl organized blood drives and directed the Special Olympics event held on campus. He also served as Eucharistic minister for the campus ministry office. With regard to the health professions, Carl was a member of the Juniata College chapter of HOSA, which is Health Occupation Students of America, all four years. As much as he has done, and as bright as he is, Carl has a refreshing humility that appears to be based on a healthy understanding of where he fits into the overall scheme of things. It has been a pleasure to know and interact with him. So unquote me, and now I'm going to quote this. <laughs> Carl A. Kim, a member of the class of 2005, has distinguished himself in his profession. After completing his bachelor's degree at Juniata, Carl earned his doctorate at Temple University School of Podiatric Medicine, completed a residency at DeKalb Medical Center, and went into private practice with Village Podiatry Group in Atlanta, Georgia. He is now an associate at University Foot and Ankle in Louisville, Kentucky, and a faculty member at the Podiatric <coughs> Institute in Decatur. Carl is also a fellow at the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons, serves as a diplomat at the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery, and holds podiatry certifications in Kentucky, Indiana, and Georgia. Carl has published articles in Journal of Foot and Ankle Surgery, Foot and Ankle Online Journal, Clinics of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery, and an entry in a textbook on foot and ankle surgery. He has lectured at professional conferences across the U.S. and in Sydney, Australia. In 2011, Carl traveled to the Nepal Orthopedic Hospital in Kathmandu to operate on patients as part of a medical mission trip. Within the next few years, he would operate on these patients by flashlight, 
teach and collaborate with Nepalese doctors, and procure donations for the hospital. He eventually became a co-leader of the trip, working through a nonprofit organization called Healing the Children. After a 2015 earthquake killed more than 8,000 people in Nepal, Carl worked with MedShare to send 1,000 boxes of medical supplies to the Nepal Orthopedic Hospital. For this work, he was awarded MedShare's Community Hero Award, and in 2016, he was featured on the doctor's television show on NBC for Healing the Children in Nepal. In 2017 and 2018, Carl traveled to San Lucas Tolum in Guatemala, where he performed approximately 30 surgeries in five days. He continues to bring his leadership not only to his, through service, but also by working as attending surgeon for residents at, of Norton Healthcare's Kentucky Podiatric Residency Program in Louisville. This award is presented to him in recognition of his career achievements and for representing the ideals of the Juniata community by striving for excellence in all of his endeavors. It is an honor and a privilege to present Dr. Carl A. Kim, 2005, with the Young Alumni Achievement Award by direction of the Alumni Council. And Carl, I am so proud of you. <laughs> special to be with you today. It's very special and a moment I'll never forget and I'm so thankful that my family was able to travel here to be with me today too. And not just for today but for this entire journey that brought me here today. Thank you so much. It's not something that was done easily or quickly but I know I could not have done it without your support, without your love. Thank you. <coughs> Juniata College, thank you. I did this with you and through you, and I sincerely appreciate the education and the experience here. You helped me to develop into a forever student, a critical thinker, a well-rounded individual, compassionate and passionate, creative and accepting of all people. I am now a humanitarian, a physician, a businessman, and a proud Juniata alum. It was with your nourishment that this all came to be. In the next 45 minutes, I'd like to tell you how. <laughs> I'm going to touch on four areas. Number one is academics. When I entered school here, I achieved mostly all A's in high school without trying very hard. My first test at Juniata, I believe I scored a D. I was pretty distraught and really had the question, was I up to the task? I wanted to go to medical school. Could I do it? Was I really cut out for what I had anticipated to do? I really wasn't sure. And my professors like Deb, at a time when I wasn't sure myself, they believed in me more than I believed in myself. They went the extra mile. Deb went the extra mile. Not only spending time with me in class, but after hours. She truly cared, and that made all the difference. And that's Junior out of college. With their help, I pushed through, and I began to excel, and in time, I developed a solid foundation of knowledge. More importantly, I developed study skills and the work ethic that would drive me far into the head of my class in medical school and through residency. With the foundation of success, I also had a foundation for failure and perseverance through it. Number two is balance. School here was not easy. It was quite stressful difficult and tough. Time management became very important and a healthy ba balance and management of stress was so critical. My friends here, which are incredible people, my, my roommates and classmates helped make this possible, as did many of the great Juniata traditions, which you all know. Work hard and play harder remains one of my mottos in life that keeps me sane. 
In a similar matter, balance with the curriculum was so important. I wasn't just a science student. With this liberal arts educational curriculum, I was taking classes like Introduction to Western Art, Poetry Writing, and the Art and Science of Brewing Beer. <laughs> I don't know many things cooler than that. <laughs> Being well-rounded uh, definitely shaped me, and I continue to have a life outside of my profession today. And I believe this makes me relatable to my patients and my colleagues. Number three is critical thinking. My professors, many of who are the most brilliant minds I've ever met, always challenged us, not just to learn verbatim facts, but to think and to educate ourselves beyond what we could learn in the textbook through experience. Here I also learned how to collect data, how to format a study, how to analyze the data and make conclusions. I recall one of my first research papers being critiqued when I was handed my, my page back. I thought somebody had bled on the paper. There were so many red marks on the <laughs> This was the start to my education and it was required to make me better. As Devin mentioned, I lectured around the country and I've written articles and textbooks and offered, authored many journal, journal articles. But again, these basic skills all started here at Junietta. Number four, and this is the last one, service and volunteering. In my first three years at Juniata College, I served as my student class president each year. In my last year, I was the student body president. I was the president of the Juniata Active Volunteer Association, which did the blood drives and the Special Olympics event. And it was truly an honor to represent my classmates and our community. And this is something that I forever will continue. Giving back was truly rewarding but it helped me not only foster my leadership skills, but also become a better team player. And certainly I use this every day. At this point in time, I represent the state of Kentucky in our national podiatry professional organization and I lecture around the country, but also serve around the world in countries such as Nepal and Guatemala. And that's what I wanna focus the rest of my talk on. To date, I have volunteered on eight surgery mission trips in these two countries, and we've been treating mainly children born with congenital foot and ankle deformities. One of the most common ones we see is a club foot deformity, where the foot is actually turned backwards or sideways, making it impossible for them to function and walk <coughs> and have a normal life. Our, our teams do the best we can with the limited time and resources that we can. This past March, in five days, we performed 51 surgeries. In transforming these patients and giving them a chance at a better life, it's also transformed my life forever. I've gained a worldly perspective of life, and as I returned on each one of these trips, I was also perplexed and thinking about what we were there doing, but what was being done to us. In the end, the people of so much less than us taught me so much more than I was probably able to do or give them. I fought to understand how these people in the third world with severe deformity could be the happiest people I've ever met in my life. I tried hard to wrap my head around this over the years and it's something that I think I'd like to touch on next. In our society, we often focus on what we don't have and what we think we need. This is a never-ending, unobtainable quest to get more, newer, bigger, and better stuff. That journey never leads to fulfillment. It's just an ongoing chase that does not end in happiness, satisfaction, or accomplishment. It just keeps going. We get stuck taking relationships and things around us for granted, and we often do not realize what we've actually had until we have a chance to look around and realize we lost it. This is very sad because by then it's too late. In these other countries, these people have nothing to start with. Instead of dwelling on everything that they wish they had, they focus on the so little that they do have. And namely, this is the people around them and their relationships. They appreciate one another and have a sense of family and a sense of purpose in life. Right now, realizing what we already have and the blessed circumstances that we're born into and the ability to live in this country, we can change our mind's eye to see all the valued good and the positivity in each situation, and realize that our worst day is better than many of these people's best day of their life. In my experience, we can find happiness when we focus on all the valued good that we already have. 
Try it. Show homage. Give sincere appreciation to your coworkers and family. Tell people what they mean to you. Use the word of love. Live a passionate and purpose-filled life. And making somebody else's day, make your own. Conscientiously make the choice to see the good in the world. Otherwise, you're wasting your time, and later it might be too late. In conclusion, Juniata College, thank you so much. This is a moment I'll never forget. You've provided me with academics, balance, critical thinking, and enhanced my will to volunteer and serve. Although Juniata is an Iroquois Indian term meaning standing stone, for me it was really a stepping stone. It allowed me to achieve my professional goals and to serve others. And in turn, changed my life perspective forever to be one of the happiest people I know. For that, thank you so much. Congratulations, Carl. In recognition of this service,